I once heard a story about a guy who cut up logs with an axe. In fact, he was so good, his supervisors noticed him and they decided to give him a chainsaw. After a week with this new chainsaw, his productivity dropped in half. And the supervisor came to meet with him and said, you know, really, I don't understand why, what's wrong with this chainsaw? And he pulls it up to see if it starts and ring, ding, 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 the chainsaw started up and the guy's like, oh, I didn't know it made that sound. So that's essentially what I'm talking about today. We're going to be talking about adjustment layers and maybe you want to make your photos look good and you want to make them look good as fast as possible. But maybe you're not aware of all the things that they can do. And so it's taking you longer to do things or you're not getting the most out of these adjustment layers. So this tutorial right now, I'm going to show you some tips and tricks and things you can do with adjustment layers. But also for those of you who don't fully understand them, how to use them to make every single photo look better. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com, the very best place to learn Photoshop and Lightroom. So just recently I did a tutorial on how to use curves and you guys absolutely loved it. So following along in that vein, we're going to look at adjustment layers. There's two things that you're going to get out of this. Number one, I'm actually going to show you, I'm going to break them down and show you exactly how they work. So there's no guesswork in there and in fact it's a lot simpler than what you think. But along the way, I'm going to show you some creative ways to use it. In fact, there's four different things that we're going to do with adjustment layers right now. Okay, so if we look at this photograph here, it's broken into two parts. What we see right now is the final composite image. But if we break it into the two parts that exist, the first part is the color. And as you can see, the color is a very, very thin layer. And affecting the color doesn't change the luminance. It may change the perception of the luminance, but it doesn't change the luminance. And in the second one is the luminance or lightness. And this is the grayscale value. This is what gives it its definition. So by lightening and darkening this, it gives our definition and our contrast. And then we put our color on top and we've got our complete image. If we look under here and we go image adjustments, you'll see that we've got all the adjustments there. Now the adjustments are different in filters. Filters apply special effects. Adjustments work with color and luminosity. Now you don't want to apply them here because they're very limited. What you want to do is go to the layers panel and then you see this little yin yang, click on there and we'll see the adjustment layers. In fact, these are pretty much the same adjustments as the ones in the menu with an exception. And we're going to look at that in step number four. So step number one right now is to understand how these work. They work in four different groups. If you notice here, they're arranged one, two, three, four different groups. The first one here are fills. So we can fill it with a solid color, a gradient order or pattern. So that's a useful thing. The second thing here is we've got brightness, levels, curves, and exposure. Here we're dealing with our luminosity. Yes, we can do color in this crossover and all that kind of thing, but essentially this is where we change the brightness and darkness of the image or different parts of the image. Then we go into the next part and these predominantly deal with color. So here's where we're going to shift color. We're going to add color, remove color, do all the color work. And then finally, we've got some different tools here that do a number of different things. So what's the benefits in using adjustment layers versus regular adjustments? One is in non-destructive. The second part about them is that they're reusable. And the third thing is that they're stackable. So if I go in here and I do a basic curves, and once again, you know, I'm going to add a link right now underneath in the show notes to my tutorial on curves so you can understand how they work. So say I apply a curves adjustment there and then I want to change it later on. I can go back later and say, you know what? I wanted to kind of open that up a little bit more. Oh yeah, nice. So if I grab all three of these and I hit control G to put them into a group and we'll call it adjustments and I want to use these on another document, I can simply drag this up here into the new document and drop it on there and look at that. Now we've got those curves adjustments. These are stackable. So I can take a second curves adjustment and notice what it does. It multiplies that effect. And of course we can do things with blending modes and things like that. But let's go in here now and I'm going to add a little bit of blue here. So I'm going to increase the blue to give it into the shadows just a little bit here to give it a little bit more of a cinematic grade. So now we've got two curves adjustments together. Number three, 
Adjustment layers work with blend modes and layer masks. So we can adjust even just the opacity if we wanted to change the amount of the effect. See that? But let's push it right up. We can also work with blend modes here. So if we throw this into an overlay blend mode, see how it kind of affects it differently. But it's also, we're losing a lot of information here. So what we can do is grab our layer mask. I'm going to grab a black brush. And I don't want it to be in this foreground here. So I can paint this away. Okay, so we can mask these. So if we look at this before the mask and we look at after the mask, also we can look at it before the adjustment and after we can see, we can precisely position it by using those masks. Now there's another thing that we can do too, is if we wanna protect an area such as the shadow area. So what we can do is we can use blend if. So if we go under our effects here, choose blending options, advanced blending options come up here and what we want to do is we want to not show the shadow. So I'm going to pull this up. And then what I want to do is just split this by holding the Alt or the Option key. And it just creates a nice, a smoother transition there. And then we can pull this up. And we can see now that we're not applying that in the shadows. And let's just do the normal blend mode here. There we go. And if this feels too strong, once again, we can just drop our opacity down and just kind of blend it in with the original and get a nice result right there. Tip number four, working with adjustment layers, is there's one group of adjustments that are available in the adjustments, but not in the adjustment layers. And that's the ones that extend the dynamic range of the photo. And there's two inside that group, HDR toning and shadow highlight. So what I'm going to do now is show you a little trick how you can make them act like non-destructive adjustment layers and get all the benefits out of them. So here's the trick. We're going to select both these layers and we're going to right click and we're going to convert to a smart object. Okay, so we've got all of that in the smart object. And now we want to apply shadow highlight. So we're going to go under our image adjustments. And now when we go down to our shadow highlight, works the same with HDR toning. So why don't we just open up the amount, we're opening up our shadows nicely and see how that's making the rocks look better and everything. And we want to recover detail in the clouds and the highlights. So we're going to pull that up a little bit. Now let's show more options and we can play around. The tone determines, if we take the tone all the way to the left, it's going to have no effect. So what that does is it decides how much of the highlights you're going to let in. And in this case, we're pulling it up so we're getting the clouds nicely. Let's go to about there and a the radius is just kind of tone maps it, gives it flavor. And what you want to do with that is just make sure you don't get halos around anything. So you're just looking for a natural result. Same with shadows, let's increase the tone. So now we're going to go into the very deep regions. If we go here, it's going to go all the way to the mid tones. Don't necessarily want that. Let's bring it back a little bit. Right there is good. Play around with the radius, get a nice tone map. Looking good. Play around with the amount. Now there's two other adjustments here. One is color. And what this does is it just gives it saturation or reduces the saturation. Because sometimes when you open up areas in a photograph that didn't have any detail, now you see the detail, the colors can get too saturated or too much of that color. So we can pull that back just a little bit right there. It gives it more cinematic look. And then of course we can adjust our midtones here. You know, what do we want to do with those midtones? And I'm thinking about there looks good. Okay, so one of the things that can happen is the image can start to look a little washed out. And we can change that by setting the black and the white clip. Let me set the black clip to about three. And notice how it gives it so much more body just by doing that. Because what it's doing is it's excluding those areas of black and it's letting those blacks stay black. Here's a grayscale, here's black, and here's white. So instead of lightening everything, what it's doing is it's clipping to that first little bit and then that bit is left black and then it's applied to the rest of it. So as I move that clip, it affects less of the image. And then by doing that, it gives it the body and stops it looking washed out. Next one is white clip. Why don't we just slide that up a little bit and notice we're just cleaning up those whites doing exactly the same thing. Now we're just going to click OK. So how is this like an adjustment layer? Well, let me show you the functionality of the adjustment layer. We double click it here. We can go back in, we can change our settings. So that means one, it's non-destructive. Okay, the other thing is if we click down here and right click, we can edit the blending options. So this gives us our blending modes. 
and this gives us our opacity. So if it's too much of an effect and we just wanna apply a little bit of it, we can dial it in to wherever we want. And what about reusability? You betcha. If I go into this other document here, make sure I convert it to a smart object first, I can go down, grab my adjustment layer, drag that into the window there, release it, drop it on top of there, and look at that. There's our adjustment layer. Even though it's a smart object, it works exactly the same way. As you can see, part of what we're doing here involves layer blending modes, and I'd like to help you with that. I've created an ebook. In fact, I was going to sell it, and I decided to give it away for free. Click the link underneath, and you can get my layer blending modes ebook absolutely free. So anyway, I got a question for you because I notice that people like to shout out where they're from. So in the comments underneath, give us a shout out. Tell us where you're from. And by the way, if you like this video, smash that like button into dust. If you enjoy these kind of tutorials every single week, I do a new one. Press that subscribe button right now and then you'll become part of the cafe crew and you'll get that new tutorial. Oh, by the way, even if you have subscribed, and you don't hit that little notification bell, you need to hit that as well. And then that will notify you when I upload new tutorials. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe. Mm -hmm.